Hello, Mindsetters. Welcome to Learn Extra Live. Of course, this is Great 12 Life Science, and this is Llewellyn. How are you? Right in yourself, Kat. Great, thank, thank you. you. Well. We're doing population ecology today? That's it. Awesome. Please tell us more. We will in a few minutes. Okay, <laughs> so that's a surprise for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> you can go over to the board. So you do know that you can get hold of us on <coughs> Facebook, facebook.com forward slash learn extra. <coughs> and our Twitter <coughs> handle is at learn extra. So make sure you use these fields to communicate with us, guys. These fields, we are here for you all the time. So make sure that you send through the questions that you have on population ecology, any queries that you have, anything maybe your teacher might have said that you want to clarify, just anything. Just make sure that today you use this time to, to maybe give us your all because I know that exams or trials, prelims, whatever you want to call them, they are extra, 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 extra soon. So you know that you need to be on your best for the next few weeks until they start. Over to you, Llewellyn. Thanks, Kat. Um, well, Let's just carry on from where we started off last week or where we ended off la last week. Now, population ecology. At the beginning, we looked at a couple of things, but um, we're going to go back to something that we started with, what that we ended off la last week, because you guys were asking me. I got a lot of questions about it. And let's go back so that we can understand it in a better way. We, I remember la last week we had a look at population stability. How do we stabilize a population? Now, remember I said to you where we can introduce two things or a male and a female and they'll start growing and we'll make a whole big population of them or should I say a specific species and all of that. We'll, we'll make a huge population of different animals and, and all of that. But <coughs> we need to get the, the, the animals at a, a good rate. So their birth rate and their death rate needs to become even. Okay. Now, the first graph that we actually had a look at lo uh, lo last week was your growing patterns. We had a look at two graphs. The first one was your geometric graph, and the second one was your logistic graph. Okay. There they are. Uh, let's get this yellow pen going. The two graphs, the geometric graph, and the lo second one was the lo logistic graph. Now, they, the one, the geometric graph, Okay, it actually fits inside the logistic graph. Okay, um, that is the, the nice part about it. Okay, so as long as you know the logistic one, you can actually find out a lot about the geometric one. Okay, now, sorry, I know I'm rushing through this piece, but at, at least we can, just a quick recap. Oof, let's get rid of this. There we go. There we go, logistic. We went a little bit too far. Geometric graph. Now, your geographic, geograph we're going to get this right. <laughs> Geometric graph, graph patterns. It's very, very strange. They call this the J shape graph. Okay, the J shape graph. What actually happens is we actually start off with something nice and small. I'm going to use a different color pen so we can, so we can actually go for it. We start off. We introduce these animals or, sp or, or, or different species. Right. We introduce them and they grow extremely quickly, right? The birth rate of it is quite high. The death rate, very, very low, because we, they, they don't know, the, um, there's no predators for them to kill them. So what happens is they speed up quite nicely, they grow quite nicely. Now, this graph normally comes with things like bacteria. So when you're getting sick, like I am at the moment, so when you're getting sick, this is what actually happens, right, with a bacteria. Okay, so they grow nice and fast. They get this huge good curve and they come up from almost nothing to feeling very bad. That's how you feel. So as they dividing, can you remember? It, um, it starts off with one cell. It goes through division, making it two. The two go to four. The four go bigger and bigger and they just get huge. So they, they, they actually, it's almost like a, it's, it's an asexual thing. If you have a look at the top, Okay, logistic graph, it normally happens to a population that um, expands very quickly, right? It's normally an asexual thing. So they can reproduce very, very, very quickly. Okay, now, last time I brought up this, I got a lot of questions asking, what is this dotted line for, right? This dotted line just tells you where it stops, okay? So what actually happens is, you will notice in the next shape, in, in the next graph that, that we do, right, there is dotted lines between everything. Now, I've got the one and I've got the other. It's just they've put two J-shaped graphs in there. So you can actually see what happens. Now, normally, normally what happens is it shoots up nice and high 
And then, of course, we start taking our antibiotics. Now, I'm talking bacteria, so you can use antibiotics, right? So we use antibiotics. It goes nice and high, right? We use antibiotics, and we kill them. So it drops quite low, quite quickly, right? It drops nice and low, and then what happens? We stop taking our antibiotics, and it starts growing again, nice and high again. Then we decide, no, we're feeling too bad again. We better take our antibiotics. We take our antibiotics, and it drops down, and we decide we're actually going to listen to the doctor for once in our lives, and it's gonna, we're going to take all of them, and we kill them off right to the end. We're feeling great, 100%. We can do all our sport. Right. Now, <coughs> that is what happens with a geometric graph. Okay, so that's quite a nice one. The next one we have a look at is your logistic graph. Okay, that normally happens when a population becomes stable. Now, this afternoon I was watching about the wolves, right? In, um, what's that park? Uh, Yellowstone Park overseas, right? So what they did was they came in and they killed all the wolves out, right? So the whole ecosystem, because remember, this is what we're doing. The whole ecosystem gets, gets damaged. I mean, you take out one animal, it's like a house of cards. You take out the bottom one, they all just fall flat. Now, the problem with that is you don't just take out the wolves, you kill a lot of other animals, right? Um, it, like the beavers got affected, even though it's not part of the wolves. The beaver gets affected. Now, that there, if you take out something, something gets destroyed. It's part of the food chain and food webs and all of that things, which is also part of the section. Right? But if we have a look at this, the part that gets to me with this is that they had to reintroduce this wolf population. Right? So they took an alpha male and an alpha female from a different part of the world, and they brought them in, and they started reproducing. In the beginning, it was very, very slowly. Right? But as soon as they started getting it, it started, going, it started increasing quite quickly, and th they just rapidly increased, and then after a while, they started stabilizing and becoming a nice even rate. So let's have a look at it. This is the logistic growth graph. Okay? Now, it's also called the S-shape graph. If I have a look at it, I'm actually going to increase here so I can actually show you what I mean. If we have a graph, okay, it actually looks like that. right? Can you see the S-shape roundabout? That is what it is roundabout. It's an S-shape graph. Okay, the first one was a J, remember the J. The second one is an S shape, which is quite cool. Now, if we go back, you will notice that there's five different regions. Okay, each region's got a specific thing. Now, I want you to remember when we looked at the J shaped graph, we had those dotted lines, right? Those dotted lines are going to come into play. Yeah, I'll show you exactly what I was going through there, right? <coughs> so, Let's have a look at it again. Uh, look at it again. It's your S shape, and don't forget the other one was the J shape. Okay, you can see the two different ones: the, geomet the, the geometric graph and the S shape graph, which is your logistic growth. Okay, very nice. Hopefully, we're getting we're getting you guys knowing what's going on. Right, we start off logistic growth patterns. Right, you get the first stage. Now, if I had a look at those wolves, because, you know, I love my wolves. If I have a look at the wolves, you got the first piece where the wolf was introduced. They ran around. They had to go find out where their food is. They had to find out where the water is. They had to go make a den, right? They had to mate. And then you still get the gestation period of where the puppies are being made inside and, and then giving birth. Now, that is the whole lag phase. That's the first part. And... The nice thing is, there it is, I put it up here, hopefully you can see it, it's quite a lag phase, it's, it's increasing very slowly because those puppies have got to grow up and then new litters are going to be made again, so it's quite a slow process. Okay, next, next one, you get the geometric graph phase or the growth phase. Now, remember I said that the geometric graph is part of this, well there it is. Okay, the J, as you can see, I know it's a bit stretched out, so you could actually see it nicely. This is where the J comes in. Can you see the J? This is where the J comes in, which is quite important. Now, remember, that is, if I have a look at it, that would be your dotted line over there. I'm trying to draw a dotted line in here, but I'm, it's very skewed. Okay, so you get your dotted line. That's that dotted line on the other graph that everybody normally asks me about. Right? That is where we make we could make or break it. That's where we get rid of bacteria. Okay, so <coughs> you get your 
Nice J-shaped graph. So what is actually happening there? Can you remember? Okay, the second phase is called your acceleration phase. Remember I said to you with the bacteria, they just shoot up nice and, nice and e uh, evenly, right? We started off feeling a little bit under the weather, and the very next day you're feeling worse, and the next day you're even feeling worse, and then you go to the doctor, right? Because we never go to the doctor when we've got a bit of a sniffle. We always wait till the bitter end when we're dying, right? Which is not very clever. So what we actually need to do is go early, and then we can kill it. But in this stage... It's, rap, it's, it's going up nice and strong, and it's solid, right? Then it gets to where we're going to start competing, okay? Now we're on the next phase, okay? Now we know where the food is. Now we're starting to have people fighting, right? You get the daddy coming along, the daddy wolf chasing the, the big males away because now they want to mate. These new big males, or, or should I say youngsters, are chased out of the pack so that they can go make a new pack for their own. Right? So that's when you get this deceleration phase. This is where, this part here, this phase, this phase is where you actually, okay, you'll notice that the natality rate, remember what natality rate is? It's the birth rate, okay? The natality rate or the birth rate is still high, but the death rate is actually catching up. It's still lower than the birth rate, the death rate, of course. So the death rate is lower than the birth rate, so we'll still get a nice even like a climb, right? A nice slow climb so we can actually get going, right? That is what happens in the deceleration phase. Remember, this is starting to climb, then we get the deceleration phase. The next phase, yeah, the equilibrium phase. Now, let's start getting some other colors going, yeah? Let's see if this will work. There we go. Yeah, I chose pink again. I'm going mad. Now, this equilibrium phase, this phase here, this is a nice part. This is where the birth rate and the death rate actually start becoming even. And if you have a look at it, what I've done is I've actually, let's, green, I like green. What I've done, <coughs> sorry, um, you will notice that it goes down and up, and down and up and down, okay? So if you have a look at the flow, now up means the birth, right? So that's when we start getting like to breeding season and they start getting, they start having youngsters and pups and, and if you have a look at the, the, the lions, the lions start having cubs and all of that. So that starts increasing quite nicely. But you're going to come to the rest of the year, right, where you are going to have some deaths. It's hard out there in the wild, right? There's not enough space for all these things. So what happens is we get a drought or we get something like that and it actually starts, well, I can't say a drought. Let, let's, let's say it comes to, in the Serengeti, you normally get, it gets a bit hot and the rivers dry up and all of that, but it's not actually that bad. Right, for, for us, for us, not bad. For them, it is. So their food runs away. They go to greener pastures. I like that one, okay? Greener, greener pastures. pastures. That's yes. nice. So they go to greener <laughs> pastures and they go have some food over there where the lions have got their territory, so they're not going to leave. Right, so we actually getting them, they, they're staying there, so whatever animals they can get to, they'll eat, but sometimes there's not enough food, so some are going to starve. That's nature, right? And so they die. And then it comes to all the animals coming back this side, and then we start having babies again. The, the conditions are favorable. You always got to remember these type of terms. Conditions fa favorable, right? And they start increasing again. Now, <coughs> the last phase on this is the death phase. Now, the death phase actually happens when we wipe out. Now, this is what happened to the wolves, okay? This is what happened to the wolves. So... Right in the beginning when wolves were put into to Yellowstone Park, not by humans, by whoever put them there, right? They came up, they introduced themselves, they went up and down, up and down, they got a nice stable condition, and we get farmers. And farmers decide, no, nah, we don't want to lose our sheep, so we're going to shoot them. So they start killing wolves. They make a nice fur coat, everything like that. They're no good, they're eating our sheep, and it's costing us a lot of money, so we'll shoot them. So what did they do? They shot them, and the last one was shot and now we extinct in that area, okay? So if you've noticed, they go all the way down to the bottom where there's nothing left, okay? So that is how it starts. Where it starts, how it gets to stabilizing, how it stays stabilizing, and how they go to nothing. That is the logistic graph pattern, okay? Which is quite nice. Perfect. What I've done, um, let me get to there. <coughs> I've actually summarized this whole part, okay? So I've actually said, said to you, don't forget, 
with the fourth stage, the equilibrium stage, as I said, the mortality rate and the, and the natality rate, they even out quite nicely. And then you get the death rate where we actually, humans either interfere, as I said, there we go, human impact, very important because part of the one section that we actually do in, um, in this ecological studies is that humans impact in everything, right? We take over, we decide what's going on. The animals don't have a chance. Okay, so we do this, we have, they have diseases, you know, you get your, um, what's that flu, the bird flus and all of that. So things do die out, right? But they'll survive, okay? And then, of course, we go to the next part. These are the, 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 the graphs itself. How do we find out about these two graphs, okay? If we have a look at it, there's, how do we get them to stabilize with each other, okay? I'm going to have a look at the S-shaped graph. Okay, the logistic graph. And we're going to decide, we're going to have a look at how we can get there or what actually happens there to make sure it's perfect. Okay, so let's ha have a look. We've got two factors that influence how these animals survive. Okay, you've got the dependent factors and the independent factors. Now, dependent factors. Can you think of anything that is dependent? Okay, what does dependent factors mean? And what do independent factors factors mean. What I've done here is I've put your shelter, competition, food, and water, okay? Without space and shelter, okay? Without space and shelter, they get restricted, and they start fighting, and they start killing each other, and it's not going to work, right? Shelter, they need to be protected, otherwise they, go, they are going to get sick, okay? That is a, a big thing. Competition, I've just mentioned, right? You get a big male and another big male, and the best genes are going to win, so they compete with each other, right, to see who can breed. They don't let both of them breed. Only the one will breed. The strongest gene will breed, nothing else, okay? Because the weakest gene, we don't want it. Only humans do the weakest genes. When it comes to, um, to animals, we make sure that all the animals, the strongest will survive. That's why you get the alpha males and the big lions protecting their territories, right? Only the strongest will breed. And then, of course, food and water, right? We, I spoke about it earlier where the water dries out, it gets nice and hot and windy and stuff like that, and the water dries up and they die, right? Okay, and then last one, the dependent, uh, the, the independent factors is nature, okay? If we have a look at it, we can't look at the climate. I mentioned climate earlier, but I'm talking about water sausage in the climate, right? Or we suck out the water, or we do something to the water, or we pollute the water, okay? Climatic factors is summer and winter, Okay, it's going to happen. You can't change it. Okay? The animals are going to die. They're going to survive. They're going to do what they have to do according to the climate. That's why the, um, the wildebeers go to the greener pastures again. Okay? They go there because their food and water is there, and here it's not. So we'll do the big migration so that we can actually go get there. And then, of course, natural disasters. So, you know, like when we talk about um, the volcanoes exploding, right? Or or um, we get meteorites hitting the earth. That's one of the things that they say that, that killed dinosaurs, right? So we, a nat natural thing, dinosaurs saws get killed. Why do they get killed? Uh, big meteorite hit the earth. There we go. There's, there's a nice little example. So all I'm looking at is natural disasters that, not nat natural disasters, but catastrophes. You get uh, your, um, what do you call it, uh, your, your, your hurricanes and that, that, take the that, that actually kill the animals. Big disasters. That, Tsunamis. That's what that, Tsunamis, there we go. I couldn't even think of the word. Okay, <laughs> so those will kill it. But before we carry on. Let's take an ad break. Last. Awesome, <laughs> I'm on you today. I that's know, it. I can read your mind. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take a quick, quick <coughs> ad break. There's already been a lot. So <coughs> deliberate with that in your mind. And remember that you can ask us questions at any point during the show. See you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. As you know, we are doing life sciences, and today we're doing population ecology, aren't we, Llewellyn? That's it. Yes, and we are still expecting some questions, so bring them through, guys, and Llewellyn will answer them. I promise you, he's fantastic. So he is ready to answer anything that you give him. Over to Thanks, you. Kat. <laughs> we spoke about a question earlier. Can yes. you just give me that question again yes, so we can we actually did. just um, help you out there? Someone said that, Mulenga said that, I don't understand the third part. Please explain to me. Okay. We've got the first phase. I'm, I'm hoping this is what you're talking about. The first phase, the second phase, and the third phase, the deceleration phase. Now, 
remember that over here, there's a vast amount of land. There's vast amount of food because the predators weren't there because they normally, or, or the predators or, or the, the, if I look at buck, they, they happy. They, they, they're giving, they, they get, they, over here, they're just getting born, right? Here, they're accelerating because they're thriving. Conditions are nice. Everything's going great, right? And then here, all of a sudden, even though it's thriving, now we're going to start competing because this is my area, right? If you come into my area, we're going to fight. Because my brother over there, he's got his area, and that one's got his area, and that one's got his area. In the beginning, I could take this little area, and my brother would be like 10 kilometers away, right? But now somebody else has got that area. There's too many people. So now we start fighting for, for position, right? So this is where it starts lagging off, because you have space issues. You have things like that. There's more things to fight for. So they start... People start dying because there's not enough food to go around. There's still quite a bit, but somebody's going to die. That's where the mortality rate actually reaches up. And then it starts slowing down to, to get to the equilibrium or carrying capacity. Now, I know that was also another question, Kat. Yes, there was. was what um, is carrying capacity? Yeah, what is carrying capacity? That question was by Lutendo. Ah, there we go. So now, carrying capacity is how much of that animal can be in that part of, of the land. Because if there's too many, they're going to eat up all the vegetation and then all of them are going to die out, right? So if they have too little, they have very little of those animals, they're going to breed quite quickly because there's a vast amount of food. But the minute it gets to the point where there's only enough, only 10 animals can survive in this small little area, as soon as there's 11, something is going to die because there's not going to be enough food for one of those animals. So he's going to die, and then we're going to go back to 10. Right, maybe two die, and then we go down to nine, as I said over here. So the carrying capacity is 10, right? So that, that would be 10. You would go up to 11. Two would die, so you go underneath carrying capacity, and then you'd have both, you would ha be happy again. There's enough food, so you breed, and now you've got 11 again. So that's how it works. So you don't actually get to complete carrying capacity. You're always just under or just above, just so that it, it works out nicely. Otherwise, there's going to be no competition in that. And if you watched last week, right, I actually said that, or I actually had a look at, if, the, um, if I had a look at the buck, as the buck increase, right, they're going to get to a certain part, then they're going to start decreasing, and they're going to start increasing again, and then they're going to start decreasing again, and then increasing again. Now, this would be uh, over here, I'll draw a nice line. This would be round about carrying capacity, right? How much it can take. But what we also know is because things are actually, let's try white. I haven't tried white yet. Because, because of this, right, you will notice that the predators actually do the exact same thing, but they don't overlap each other, okay? So what actually happens is the lion actually if I'd use lines, will actually go up here, go above, then go down with them, right? And when they're on their lowest, they will be the highest, and go up again, and they will come down, oh, go down again. So what actually happens is, see how they both go over carrying capacity? Now, this is why the animals drop, okay? So as it goes up, they're thriving. What is happening to the lions? There's more lions. The more buck there are, the more lions that come because there's more food. As soon as the bucks start decreasing because all the lions are starting to eat the buck, what happens to the lions? They also start decreasing. Okay, so this helps each other in the carrying capacity. Okay, because if there was no predators, this antelope will just keep on going or skyrocketing up into the air. So the predators are very important in this whole circle of life, according to the the um, Lion King. Lion King, I Lion love the Lion King. King. So <gasps> hopefully this has answered your, your question of understanding what the, what's going on there. Okay, now we were having, before we went on a break, we had a look at um, density dependent and density independent factors. Okay, they're going to ask you this. Guys, they like these questions. Be density dependence and density independence. They'll ask you to give a definition of them. As I said, it's factors that, indep uh, dependent factors is factors that um, the animals do on themselves. Okay, so for example, competition, food, and all of that, that's what keeps it going up and down, right? Then, of course, this is the factors that you can control. 
right? When it comes to independent factors, that is factors that you cannot control, right? So you're looking at the weather, you're looking at uh, um, natural disasters and things like that. It doesn't matter how much you do a rain dance, you ain't gonna get it to rain. I know I've tried. Really? I've tried. I think I'm good at that, <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I have a look at the next part, what I did, lifespan, right? We, we, we've just spoken about dependence and independent factors and all of that. Now, that's all nice, right? Those affect the lifespan of individuals, right? But lifespan of individuals is actually quite important because the lifespan of humans is different to the lifespan of, of fish, for instance, okay? Now, why is that like that? Okay, you get different strategies. You get an R strategy and you get a K strategy, right? And then you get one in the middle that has a bit of both, okay? Now, what are they? That is the big question. If we look at the R strategy, there it is. These are, these are animals that are like, um, I said fish. What happens is they lay a lot of eggs, tons and tons and tons of eggs. Now, why do they lay eggs? Uh, why do they lay so many eggs? Is because they're not going to look after them, right? All of them are going to hatch, and when they hatch, mommy's 10,000 kilometers away. This is normally happens in the sea. That's quite cool. So mommy's far away. Babies hatch, and now they've got to look out for predators, right? And if we want these things to survive, what do we do? We make a lot of them so that a lot of them can be eaten, but some will survive. But those ones that survive live for a nice long period of time, right? And if you look at humans... Do we do that? Uh, yes, we do get our twins and our triplets in that. But we do not, we do not go have thousands of kids at a time. Can you imagine that, Kat? No, I can't. It actually. would drive me nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, what actually happens is the fish lays its eggs and it goes off, right? These uh, little creatures, they, the, the little fish, they actually hatch and they stay, stay together and they swim off and big fish come and eat them and come go crazy, some will survive. The more fish there are, or the more baby fish there are, the better it is, right? The more chance they have of surviving, okay? That is your R strategy uh, species, okay? The next one is your K strategy species. Now, your K strategy species are us. I think that's a nice way to put it. Us. They us, right? They are normally your mammals, right? You have a baby or two babies or three babies, but you look after them. The mother stays with them and protects them. It doesn't matter if your dog has six puppies, right? Let a stranger go near those puppies. The mother will give its life for those babies, okay? Now, that means we have a lot less children, which means those children survive. They have a bigger chance of survival to an older age, okay? So that is the K strategy. So once again, R strategy, very simple, lots of babies where they, a large amount of offspring, let's change color because white and white, we're not gonna work well together today. A large amount of, uh, of, of offspring, okay? Lots of them are gonna die, the offspring, a lot of them are gonna die and the mortality rate in them is very high. A lot of them are gonna die, so a little bit will survive. And when they survive, they live for a long period of time. Okay, K strategy, it's very simple. I want to get it, there we go. K strategy, greater chance of survival. We look after baby. Yes, I'm not saying the children are not going to die. Okay, the K strategy is there. The mother looks after it, gives it as best it can, best um, childhood it can to survive. That is why all your doggy stays, you can only give your puppies away at a certain age. That's why the, the, the cheetahs actually have to show their children how to hunt. The lions have got to show them how to hunt while they stay together, okay? That is the big thing, okay? They stay together, that is the K strategy uh, type of species. Now, if I have a look, I put them here again. If a K, K strategy would be your, um, your mammals, right? There they are, K strategy is your mammals. Your R strategy, right, would be your oysters or your fish or anything like that. And then I've just thrown one in there into the works that has a bit of both, right? And those are like your rodents, your rabbits, okay? Rabbits breed like 
Rabbits. <laughs> like That's the bunnies. way to put it. <laughs> rabbits breed like bunnies. Rabbits breed like bunnies. <laughs> Hopefully that helped us. But rabbits breed like bunnies. Now, if I have a look at it, that's what we get hold of. Okay? The first one, now we can use white. Okay? The first one, A, a I said is the K strategy. That is humans. Have a look how we start off young. Okay? The young survive quite a bit. So the amount of young survive. It's a lot of young that survive. And they start decreasing right at the end. And they die over here. Right? The B1, remember, is your R strategy. Okay, that one, have a look how they have a lot of young. We all have a lot of young. And when they're born, lots, lots of them die. And when they die, the ones that survive live for a long period of time. Okay, so mammals live quite a bit. The babies have a high, a high, uh, um, what should I say, a low mortality rate. Whereas the B have a high mortality rate. So A, don't die as easily. B, lots of them are going to die, right? And then, of course, you get your rabbits. Now, there's always some animals that have to just change everything. Everything. Right? They've always just always got to Always exceptions difficult. to the rule. Always exceptions always. to the rules. So <laughs> what happens is they have a lot of rats or rabbits or whatever. Some of them will die, right? But a lot of them will survive to an older age. Right? So that's what we were looking at. It's a little bit of both. But we normally look at the two strategies, the K and the R, which is they like asking that in tests. It normally happens in your finals that they do ask this because people get confused and they look at that graph and they go, oi, that doesn't look very nice. Right? So what we're going to do is you need to know this graph. Okay? It's not a difficult graph. Humans are on the top. They stay nice and old. They, 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 their children survive. And... The, the, when you get to the oysters or the fish, lots of eggs, a lot of the babies are going to die. High mortality rate and a low mortality rate for the humans. Okay. Now, <coughs> if we have a look at potential size of populations. Okay. Now, I know I'm jumping from pieces to pieces, but I'm trying to get an all-round feeling of what's going on, right? Now, I know we don't have a lot of time, so what I actually do is I'm taking certain parts that is quite crucial that they're going to ask you with. And I'm trying to stay away from parts where you've learned before. So what I've done is I'm looking at population size. Okay. Now, population size, we can, we can calculate a population in two ways. Okay. The two big words, and you've got to remember them because they're going to ask you about these two words, is qualitative. Let me just check if it is. Qualitative and uh, um, quantitative. Okay. They're the two, quantitative and qualitative. Now, if I have a look at it, let me just have a look. Yeah, qualitative and quantitative, okay? Quality and not so much quality, okay? Qualitative and quantitative. One has got to do with perfect. We're looking at 100%, and the other one is roundabout, Okay, so the whole part of this, these counting of things actually help us to find out what the, what the size of the population is, okay, how they're going to survive, what the carrying capacity is, right, where, where do we have to, if we don't have enough predators, when do we have to take animals out so that they don't reach over carrying capacity, right? So this is quite a big thing. It also helps survival strategies, Okay, how we, we need to find out, for example, a good example I found out was that we have the lions, right? And we have this huge drought. Now, we started off with 50 lions, right? So we count them before everything goes right. We have 50 lions. This big drought happens. We count them after the drought. We find out that there is 30 that survived. That means 20 died out. Now we need to find out what they did to survive those harsh conditions, right? That is how we find out the strategies of survival, how we determine what is going on, okay? So if we have a look at the first one, it's always nice to look at it, determining the numbers, okay? Before we do anything, we need to have a look at how animals actually live because we have some animals that are 
that are in pride, like lions. Then you get your wildebeers that are all over the place. And then you get your lone animals like your rhinos that stay by themselves, right? Now, each one has got a specific thing, okay? If we have a look at it, three types. Random, okay, regular, and cluster. Those three are the types of populations that we actually get, okay? So I'm going to look at the first one, which is your regular. Now, what I've done is I've actually drawn a nice grid for you, which they give in the, the, the exams, okay? They ask you to explain this. Now, this says that they live evenly amongst each other, okay? So you get the rhinos. I like looking at it rhinos in this way, because if I had to just zoom into this little piece over here, if I had to draw just this small little piece over here, I could actually divide it into four, and that's going to be one rhino, another rhino, another rhino, and another rhino, okay? They don't mind intermingling with each other, but stay out of my territory when there's a female there, okay? So that's what actually happens. They're happy, and they've all got a nice size, um, nice size little area that they look after. So they don't mind big, my, my, my brother from, or the neighbor coming into my yard a little bit, right? You can come and we can chat and we can talk, but as soon as there's a female that I'm trying to impress, you better stay out, she's mine, right? That is the regular. And if you have a look at it, they're actually quite nicely spaced out along the area. Okay, regular, nice spaced out along the area. Do not say things like lions, okay? Because... These animals, right, they don't mind if you have a look at it. They've got their territory, but they don't mind, like intermingle. It's fine, okay? But lions are completely different, right? So what I'm going to do is we're going to take an ad break. But before, why, before we go to, go to this ad break, I need some questions, okay? So send some questions. Let me answer it because the more questions I have from you, the better I understand if you're knowing what's going on or if you don't, okay? Awesome. Let, then let's take a break. You heard what Llewellyn says. You must send us some questions. If perhaps you want to answer anything that he said or clear up anything, you can do that as well. See you right after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I know we have, this lesson just <coughs> goes so fast sometimes, and I just look at the time, and I'm like, I'm sure we're halfway through, and then I look again, and then we're not. So here we are. I know there's many, many questions, and fantastically, you guys have answered them, and you are right on the ball. Llewellyn did go through them, and those of you who did answer, you are on the right track, and I know some of you are even writing tomorrow. So this lesson was absolutely awesome. Over to you. <laughs> How's it, guys? Listen. One of the questions I did see a few seconds ago with Kat was, was, what is the difference between a population and a community? Remember, a population is the same species that can interbreed with each other. Remember, species is a specific type of animal, right? And a community is different species living together. So a uh, population of rhino are rhinos, okay? A community would be your zebras and your wildebeest and your lions, okay? That is a community. Just think about it very nicely. Community, all different types of populations together. Population, a specific species, okay? I hope that clears it up. So It does indeed. It was very nice. Now, I left off at the regular type of population, okay? Now, this one's nice and easy. Remember, it's a rhino. It's a solitary animal, and it has its its own little barriers, right? The next one, if we have a look at, is your random. Now, if you have a look at the dots, it's all over the place. Now, these one, this, this over here, this type of, of population is like your antelope. Remember your wildebeest and your uh, zebra and all of that? You know, you always see them together. They don't care who's standing next to me. It doesn't matter. As long as the grass is there and the sun is shining, I'm happy. Right? They do fight for territory, remember, they do fight, but that doesn't mean that you have one dominant male that's going to mate. Right? The males try and mate for the best female, yes, but they do kind of mate. Okay? If, you are not going to, uh, if, if you're not strong enough, the female are not going to come to you, right? but they're all over the place. They don't mind, I can eat this bait of grass, you can eat that bait of grass, we're all happy. That is what random is. It's all over the place. So you'll see that there's a huge bunch. Let's see. Yellow. There's a huge bunch of, um, 
of antelope over there. There's almost nothing there. There's a nice big bunch over there. There's one over there. So it's all over the place. It doesn't really matter where they are. That is your random, okay? Regular, they've got their set boundaries and everything is fine, okay? With the random, it's all over the place. Okay, that's, that's quite a nice one. Remember, it's, uh, th th they don't have a territory. That's what we're trying to get at. So the first one has a territory. The second one doesn't have a territory. But the first one has got a small... They don't mind them coming in and out unless uh, until there's a female type present. Okay, now the next one I'm having a look at. This is quite an important one. Okay, these are called the clusters. Okay, this is your socializing animals. So in... This case, I would look at my wolves, because remember, I love wolves. So your wolves stay in packs, okay? Don't forget your lions, the um, hyenas, all of those. And if you have a look at it, they've got, yes, they've got a territory there. That one's that one's territory. That one's that one's territory. And I've made it quite, as you can see, quite nice. Now, there would be a free land that a new baby might just take over, right? And they'll fight for territory. That's how it's going to look. It's quite nice. Now, these animals are also known as the social animals. They intermingle with each other. So you've got a couple of them staying together. And if those guys want to make their pride bigger, they will raid the next pride. Okay. So they raid also, they, they, they try and raid, raid the territories to try to get bigger and more female. They want to make a nice, big, strong pride. Okay. So your pride of lions, they are clustered. Okay. Your solitary animals like your rhino, they are regular and then your last last one is your can you remember cat mm, uh, rabbits <laughs> <laughs> what i'm going to do is i want to see if you guys are paying attention to the last one i'm going to leave okay send me I'm, a question I'm and on. give you the answer okay cuz i've spoken about regular i've spoken about cluster and i don't know about the other one so i need to know if you know nice and easy just to see if you're paying attention to what i'm actually saying okay so these are the three types of populations you actually get, okay, which is quite nice. Now, I was hoping we'd get to this part. This is methods of counting. Now, a lot of people get confused with this. So I've been working quite nicely to get to this part of the lesson because they are going to ask you what is going on with the counting parts, okay? Now, remember, there's two types of counting you can actually get, okay? If you have a look, the, we had... The qualitative and quantitative. Can you remember? Okay. Qualitative means exactly. So this is where we are going to, well, before I start that, you need to choose to be able to find out which one, qualitative or quantitative, you need to ask yourself three little things. Okay. The first one would be the type of organism. Okay. The type of organism. Is it, um, how do I say this? Is it, is it plants? Is it animals? Is it um, predators? Is it herbivores? Is it omnivores? Do, do, do you get what I'm trying to say? We're looking at the type of animals, okay? The next one, specific habitat. So habitat, so are we going underwater? Are we going on land? Okay, are we looking at fleas on the dog, right? Or are we looking at the, the cockroaches in your back garden, right? So looking at the specific habitat. And then last one, accuracy required. So if somebody comes up to you and says to you, I'm looking for an average of how many wildebeest are in the Kruger National Park, you can say, okay, well, we need to find that out. Or he can say, listen, but this is my farm. Okay, I need 50 springbuck on this farm. Now, you can't say, oh, that's round about 50. Uh -uh. Simple, I want 50. That's how many need to be in here. That's how many I want. We need exactly 50. Not 51, not 49, 50. So we need to know how accurate this must be. Okay, now that accuracy is the main thing that we're looking at. Okay, so the first one. Method, you get your direct and you get your indirect type of methods, right? Your direct method is also your qualitative, okay? It is direct. It's a census method. Not senseless, 
senseless. Okay, you got senseless. it. Senseless, I got not it. senseless. Okay, now your senses. Now, I think it was this year or was it lo- last year that we did a census in this country for the humans? It was last year. Last year, where they come around with this piece of paper and they say, how many people do you have in your family? And there's a reason for that. They needed to count everybody in Johannesburg, for instance. That was the point. So instead of saying, okay, let's all gather at um, Coca-Cola Park or, or, the, or Soccer City, and then we'll count all of you guys, right? What they do is they send somebody around and you need to fill in forms. Okay, that's a nice way of looking at it. Okay, that is the first one. And the second one is indirect method. Okay, that is where we get roundabout. But this roundabout is quite accurate. Okay, so don't let it fool you. Okay, direct method, you get the census. The indirect, you get the quadrant method. And you get the mark recapture mark method. Now I know this mark recapture mark method you guys are having a problem with. A lot of... A lot of uh, Children actually do. I mean, when I was a kid, I also had a problem with them. So it's quite, if you get the facts, it's actually quite easy. Okay, so don't have to stress about it. Let's sort that out. Okay, if I've we have a look at it. I've got that answer for you, yes. by the way. It's random like the antelope. Clever. Random all over the place. Thank you very much. That's Who was it that from? It was from everyone, actually. I think the first person might have been Nogutula. And another first person was actually... Lutendo. Oh, you see, I'm impressed. Now, that <laughs> just makes me feel all warm and cozy yes, inside. How nice is that? I'm that's glad you guys that's are listening. special. <laughs> what type of special? Every kind of special. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> now, look at the census. It's very simple. We're having a look at a specific area. And if you look at it, the individual must be easily seen so they can count. So you can actually count them. You must be able to count them. It's pointless if you can't count them. Okay, so we need to, the individuals must be able to be counted quickly. Big word, quickly and easily. Yes, the census for us took a long time. It took quite a long. But in actual fact, it could have gone quick, right? If everybody was in their house at the same time, we could have done it very quickly, right? So it has to be done quickly. The individuals must be fixed in an area. That's why they use our houses, because we're not going to move from house to house every day. Right, so it, we go to the same place all the time. That's how we work it. That's how we got it. Okay, so it's got to be a fixed area. Very nice. The individual or animal has to be large. Okay, it's a nice large animal. Now, I'm not talking about elephants. I'm talking about large, something that's not a flea. <laughs> okay, something nice and large. And then how this works, right? Simply area. With, when it comes to the Kruger National Park, we're looking at the population of elephants. Okay? What they actually do is they fly a helicopter over the top, it comes down, they hover over the elephants, and they take a photo. Okay? They take a nice photo of the, ele- of, of the elephants, and we have a good picture of it, and everybody's happy. Now they can actually go to the table. They don't have to hover over and try and count while they're running. They sit there, and they go, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they count them. So that's a nice, easy way of looking at it. Okay? The next one... If I have a look at the indirect and the quadrant method, I'm trying to get through this because I know there's not much time left, so let's sort this out quickly. The quadrant method. Now, the quadrant method is when we've got small animals, okay? This is bugs in your yard, okay? If we have a look at, for example, the bugs in your yard, we normally mark a meter by a meter area, okay? We get that meter by a meter area, and we actually try and get 10%... Okay, if we have a, a meter by a meter area, we try and take 10% of the area. That's how it normally works. 10% we make quadrants out of it. Okay? And in those quadrants, if you have a look, we count inside the quadrant what is going on. So this is the sum we actually look at. Okay? It's very easy. This is an easy sum to look at. If I can just reach it. There we go. Estimate population size or EP. You'll notice on my other ones I use EP. Okay? Estimated population size is number in sample. So how many you counted okay, times the total size of the area. So the size of your yard. Okay? So if we look at it again, how many I counted times the size of your yard. Normally it's about 90 square meters or whatever. Okay? And the size of the quadrant. So then we measure the size of the quadrant. So if we took a 10% of it, we work them all together, and that is the answer. So I hope you've written that down. Okay, 
It's a very good thing to do. That you need to remember off by heart. It's a big, big thing. Okay, they do have a look at it. This is where they normally get their marks from. Okay, and I've got an example for you. Okay, if I have, this is a nice example. Okay, how did I get it? There we go. There is an average of six crickets, six crickets per 0.01 meter squared. Okay, is, and the total area is 1,000 meters. Very simple. You take six crickets times a thousand meters squared over what my, the, the what's the, the the area was the quadrant was, and we get six hundred thousand crickets. In that means in this area of a thousand meters, we'd have six hundred thousand crickets roundabout. Okay. Now I'm going to rush because I need to get to the big one because this one everybody gets confused about. Okay. Mark recapture mark method. Okay. Now. This is how they do it. They go into an area, right? And they decide they're going to go catch or they go round up a couple of animals, right? Out of this po population. They want to see how much the population is. So they go around and they, they capture a certain amount. They say they're going to get 20 animals or 25 animals, right? So they round them all up and they bring them in and then they mark them. No, they don't brand them. They mark them. They don't hurt the animals. So they'll go and put a small piece of blue paint on their tail, for instance. Okay, paint that'll come off later on. Okay, then what they do is they release them. Okay, they let them roam with their family and that again. And then after a couple of days or whatever, they go and do it again. And they, they don't try and find the real ones. They go around a certain amount up. They just grab a couple and they bring them in. Okay, and the sum for that is, there it is, EP, estimate population size, is a total of second capture, the second time we brought it in. Okay, we brought in 30. Okay times the total of first capture, so remember it was 25, and divided by, if I count inside that second capture, okay, if there was three marked animals, how many marked was there still? Okay, there was three marked animals, we put it at the bottom three. Okay, now we're going to start finding out what is going on. Okay, now this is normally very, very confusing to you guys, but I, I want you to remember one thing, a very it's very important, okay? I'm actually pinned down so we can actually do this. <laughs> formulas is unbelievable. What, what you should actually do, okay? You go study all your formulas, okay? And when you've got your formulas, you go and you sit in the exam, right? And you wait. And they say your reading time, you read for your five minutes or 15 minutes or whatever it is. I can't actually think about it now at the moment. And as soon as they say start writing, you turn your page to a blank page, Right? Not one that you've got to write on, a blank page somewhere in the back, and you write down or on your question paper at the back where there's space, you write down all your formulas. Bam. And once you've got all your formulas, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to think, oh, I'm going to forget this one, I'm going to forget this one. Write the formulas down first, write in the back, don't even think about the questions, and write the formulas down. Then when you get to where you need to use the formulas, just turn to the back of your sheet. They're all there, you know which ones to use. So, it's the correct cheat sheet. It's the one that you actually are allowed. It's one that you've taken from your brain, put it on paper in the exam venue, and then you can actually do what you need to do. Right, so please remember that. It's very important. Make sure you know how to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hope they're going to post everything in. Okay, they'll post this on, and you guys will have it. But before I go, have a great time. Kat, all up to you. Thank you, Llewellyn. And thank you, Mindsetters, that it has really been such an awesome show. You guys are always good to be with, especially when it's life science, because I know that's when all the interaction comes up. I hope you guys have had all your questions answered and you've helped each other answer everything. From me and Llewellyn, good night, guys. Have a great evening. See you for more next week. Bye. <laughs>